So at what point did you, like, I guess, start recording and, like, getting into it more on that front? Well, it was funny because when I was in Ohio, me and my dudes, we recorded in the... We, okay, we tried to record ourselves in the crib because my pops had... My pops had, had, had a mixer. And mind you, I told you, he used to DJ, right. so he still had all those records and shit. So we used to, um, we used to make cause tapes and shit, you know, make right. the beats. And for those of y'all who don't know what that is, it's a dual cassette player. And you put the, the one tape in there, like let's say it's the end of um, the, the ODB song. Doom, da, doom, doom. Doom, doom, da, doom, doom. Let's say you want to loop that. So it's at the end. You will play that. Let the shit record. Doom, do, doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. Then you pause it, rewind it, bring it back. Doom, do, doom, doom. And you just keep doing that for five minutes. And that's how we used to do it. You know what I'm saying? We used to make the beats longer and make. And we would go in there and make our songs to them. Wait, wow. that was that was the ingenuity of all the all the young cats that couldn't afford equipment. Fact. Ingenuity. fact, fact, that's a fact. What we end up doing was we found we was like, yo, this is getting kind of crazy. Fuck this. Let's try to see if there's a studio somewhere. So you know, we did our little research, found out that there was a studio for twelve dollars an hour. I mean, right now it sounds like ah, oh, twelve dollars an hour, but back then. That was a lot, you know what I'm saying? And we weren't working and no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? We were still living at home. You know, we talking 89, probably just about to get the get the gigs. You know what I'm saying? So if any of us, whatever money we did have, you know, we, we put it together and we, we would get studio time and go in there and do that. And yeah, man. So that's pretty much where that started, the recording thing. And so how did I, when did the gigs and performing opportunities start? Like you sound like you're really at the very beginning of a lot of this underground independent stuff. I was doing I was doing shows with them in Ohio. Like we was doing like okay. little we was doing little bullshit shows here and there, but we didn't really know what we was doing. We was just grabbing the mic getting it for I didn't really learn the craft of performing until I got back to New York. And I hooked up with Gene Gray and PH and all of them making records. And we began. <laughs> shout to, yeah. to Gene Gray. That's yeah, yeah. the homie. Yeah, she she took me to 40 Flavors when I was underage. Her and, her and yeah. Lyric yeah. before she was Sarah Connor. Yeah. Shout to both of them. Facts, facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of, it's a lot. It's a deep history. You know what I'm saying? We used to tear New York City up. As far as performing, people would be scared when we was on the bill because we would come through dripping. Like, and I don't mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, whatever we had on was whatever. But I mean, dripping. I mean, the show was crazy. I used to, my shows alone, I used to like theatrical shit. Like, I had a song called God Was a Dog, right? Where in the song, I, I, get, I die and I go to heaven and I'm talking to God, asking him why all this let me go back to earth and God's really a dog he's a gangster he's like nah uh -uh. he was a gangster the whole time I had a song like that back in 96 so when I performed the record like before I would even do that I would always do that song last right and then you know Gene would be up there with me PH would be up there with me I'll do a high energy song and then you'll just hear gunshot bah, 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 bah. the lights go off the lights come back on I'm on the floor. Stevie Wonder, Pastime Paradise comes on, right? Gene is over me. Um, PH is around me. They like, no, somebody help us. Somebody help us. And then if God was a thug, come on. And then I did that. And then that's how we did it. It was crazy. We was doing that in 96. That, 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 that sounds like a very, like, like the show that, like, that that sounds like me and Holden interviewed the homie Zoo, right? He owned up down there. And he talks yeah. about Dana Soul having a show where, like, every show they did this, like, oh, the DJ can't find the record or something like that. And then they just bust out into improv two freestyle. Mm -hmm. And pe the people in the, in the crowd don't realize they're doing that every show. 
it's right. not really impromptu, but that's what right. made their show lit. That's what made right. their show popping. But, but you know what? That's the point. Like, that's, that's the point. The, the cloth of what we came from, the people that were on the bills while we were performing were arsonists. Uh, like, it was serious out here. Like, it was people really performing. You know what I'm saying? Like, really showmanship. Like, it, that meant something. That's why, like, it, yo, anybody, I got my money on anybody from that era as far as performing. Anybody. Anybody. Like, you got to remember, like, Talib Kweli and most death were there. They were there early. This was early. You know what I'm saying? And, and still dope. I remember seeing most death perform and and just him on stage and just how he controlled the crowd. This was at the New York and Poets Cafe. I'll never forget it. Dude, dude controlled the crowd with just charisma and 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 cadence and bro, it was the illest thing. I sat back like a student. This was my man. But I was charisma, watching it like a charisma. Student. Charisma mattered back then. That used yes, to be an is. important, an important essence of being an artist. Nowadays, yes. the le- the the less charismatic and more awkward you are, the more that you're praised. Facts. Facts. Yeah, that's what Facts. I have to think about. Yo, how did you link up with all of this? You're one of the only people I've talked to so far that has been like, I'm performing in the 90s and most stuff was there. You got to understand, that's wildly fucking cool to me. Yeah. Um. Well, most and Qua, like, again, they was family. Like, they it, they would, they, I'm fortunate to have been around these people. I was a street guy. I was a street guy that was brought into that situation. I just knew how to rap. And to be honest with you, without them, ain't no telling where I would have been right now. Because they gave me an outlet. When they met me, I had a tech in my book bag on the A tree, pulled the shit out, word them over. Because they wanted to see it. It was like, no, 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 no. Come here, we got something, you know what I'm saying? We heard you nice or whatever. And that was it. I, I ain't never read. I started seeing things different. You know, most was coming through, most. We, I, I was calling him Dante. That was his name, Dante. You, you yeah, know what I mean? Gonna say, I was going to say, Penn, you know, Penn, uh, I mean, right, like, not not to make it seem like it's not, right, but, like, back then, most in Kuali were rubbing elbows and next and, and, and in kinship with a majority of all the people that we've interviewed. Like, yeah. like they, were, yeah. they, they were, they were, they were, they were yeah. people, they were people. Penn was there. Very, it's just, it's just that, we are not of the like, like right, like we're not big on like name dropping a lot of people. So a lot of the people that we interviewed really like try to steer clear of name dropping their names. But it's like they should name it because it, it that like people like Holden and people and people who aren't from the city no, they're man, totally it's, unaware. No, it's, it's they, like, like I'm sitting, but they, they gotta like that add to that. Days, like these guys were really they were it was Dante and it was and, and I forget what um. What what everybody used to call Kwali, but it, it wasn't it wasn't uh uh Talib, that's for sure. No, I I, I always called him Kwa. Always. But it's like it's wildly well, interesting because like something that's really hard to do is Google this stuff. Like I don't know if you ever really tried to Google rap history without knowing what the truth is, but like it's wildly not easy. Um the other side is like I'm listening to your your, your music, right? Like, and it's really tight. And I'm like, this is, like, really good. Like, at a tier of good where, like, I'm astounded at the view count because of how good it is. Like, astounded. Because you can ask Flacco. I'm not one to just be, like, hyperbolically, like, just showing shit around. I was like, that's precise. The fucking mix of this is hard as fuck, but also saying something is really profound to me. Yeah, but then you're um, like, I'd like to, I'd like to co-sign real quick that like T back then, right? Like every that that is a very factual thing. Like he was one of the very few, like the underground in New York City, the independent scene. It was kind of filled to the brim. Uh, uh, Lyricist Lounge and all those guys, they 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 teetered the line between conscious and just lyrical rappers, but they weren't street 
They weren't of the streets. They right. weren't. They didn't speak to people of the right. streets. And Seed was one of. He was the one uh, amongst you know one uh, one amongst millions. You know what I mean? Like like he was the only one. Really I wasn't on my backpack that. shit. I wasn't. Like was, I wasn't on no. I wasn't on no backpack. Yeah, he was not shit. on the backpack yeah. shit. And back but, but, then, but, but, all but, the homies but, was backpack. But I ran with him, like it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like they was all my people. But I wasn't. I didn't rap like that. Like I that, could because I was just around. So him, wildly cool. Like, like to me, like I reviewed Gene Gray's music. Just the idea that you'd be running. Or I watched your shit happen story. And I was like, that's just like a wild story that you were with Gene Gray. And I'm like, that's why. Like, yo, all of this is yo, like wild we, to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret, but it ain't really going to be too much of a secret. We, we were actually a couple at one point. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the underground, we was like J and B before <laughs> all of that. You know facts. what I'm saying? These are like, facts. These are facts for the people that are in the know. Oh, back Super then, you got, it was. It absolutely was. Anything about like, That's like a... So, so you, okay, so you come back to New York in like, what, 90-ish, you said? And then yeah, somehow 90. between there and 96 or 7, you're running around with all these people doing crazy stuff. How do you, like, get from, like, I guess, you, you know, you, you run into them, but, like, I don't know. It's, how does it, like, progress, I guess, into that point where you're actually in that place? Have I got in the loop? I can't even... My boy, um, my boy Magnum P, his name was Meat Pie back then. He was also in the group OBS with me and PH and him um, on making records. But um, P knew everybody. He was like the mayor. He's like Poison Pen. Um, Poison Pen, Magnum P, and PH know Everybody. Everybody. If, if, yo, yo, if, 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 if they didn't Everybody. know if they didn't know all three, they knew one of the three or two of the three. Like, like there's no Everybody. way you were in the loop and did not know one of those three or all three. Like there's just no way, right? So I knew P from the street. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well not PH, because I met PH later, but I knew um Magnum P, Me Pie from the street. And he did a song with Jean Grey. Her name was What What at the time. It was called Negro League Baseball. He did the, he did the song. With, yeah, and, and What What had a group called Natural Resource. And, 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 that, and that group had that song. They had a video and all that. I didn't know. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? And then Magnum P told me, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I just did a song. We did it. I was like, oh, word, son, that's what's up. Cause I had been in a group with with Pete. We 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 was OBS already. We, OBS was some street shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, he introduced me to Gene to what, and and we became like best friends immediately. Like we we were like Beavis and Butthead, like for real, for real. Like that was my dog. Like you ain't see one without the other. We were we would walk around the village with a boom box and just smoke joints and just walk around and look for ciphers, and just chill and walk through Chelsea with the boom box and just chill. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days, back in the she, days, 90s New York City shit. She, yo, she the one put me on to South Park. She the one got me smoking cigarettes. Damn you. Word up. You know what I'm saying? But, um, or, 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 yeah, man, I, I, very talented, very, very talented. I seen her do things that a lot of people, most too. I seen, I've heard songs and heard things in that studio up in the attic that people will never hear. That was a myth. Most was Drake before Drake. He got whole songs singing before Umi says, like whole records, bro, that he just was doing in the house. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jean is a producer. She was going under the name Run Run Shaw as a producer. I have a whole album that she produced that never came out that I'm going to put out one day when the time is right. PH is on it. She's on it. 
Like, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And, and she produced she, she it. She is the woman. She's the first woman I ever met that was a producer. She put me on, right, to the fact when, when she was up in the Chelsea Hotel, right? Yeah. She had the yeah. Casio, the yeah. same one that Swiss Beats had. She yeah. hated the right. fact that I liked Swiss Beats' production. And she put me on to the fact that the down bottom beat was already programmed into the Casio keyboard, and she played the. And she put me on to the fact that he was basically biting. All he did was put like some drums behind it and got paid. Yeah. Very, very, very dope, man. Like, 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 very dope. And and I was fortunate to be around that kind of energy at that time because it, it really helped me as an artist. I was, yo, I was fresh off the street, bro. So in terms of like structuring things and just being creative, like I don't think I would have been able to, have... to do is spit bars. Right. Like I, I didn't know and, and be in the street. You didn't even know how to count bars. Yeah, not, well, I was making songs like I, I I had made songs and shit before, but I wasn't really taking it serious. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they 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 it, it was a haven of creativity, which is what you need as an artist. You need to be around people, especially early, you know, around people where it's just a whole bunch of creativity, or it's just energy, 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 yo, energy. You know, and I, I think I thank God for it. I, I would I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. Nothing. My first time overseas with them. Yo, true story. One time, me, it was me, it was Gene, it was it was the whole natural resource. Me, Gene Gray, Aggie, what what? Uh, well, she was what what? Ocean was PH there? I think PH was there. And we was in Boston. We went to go see. Um, P up at his college, Magnum P at his college. Yo, we all had to take a shit at the same time, right? So check this out. This this is how much of a family we are, bro. We went into the bathroom, bust out. All the stalls were uh, were open. Yo, everything I love, all of us got in a stall and we shit together like a family. That's amazing. It was the most. It was the most beautiful thing. That sounds like the ultimate team bonding experience, for real. It was. It was, bro. I smelled things like that. I everybody smelled, everybody smelled each other's shit, literally. You know what I mean? And when right. you know that everybody shit don't stink and everybody understands and they're on the same plateau together, yeah. that, that brings that brings brings the team to tighter together. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, it just, it just, I, I was fortunate to be around that energy. It was just a lot of really good energy around it. And all that helped. It helped. That's amazing. That is one of my favorite anecdotes I've ever heard in my life. No, not, not <laughs> in my life. Okay. Like <laughs> six people taking a group shit. Like you almost, don't it was be- crazy. You almost don't believe that that could ever happen. Yo, it's some yo, shit that you, you imagine. Ever see, <laughs> if you ever see Jean Grey, Ask her. Be like, yo, Bassy said that y'all all shit together in the in the in the in the bathroom in Boston. I have every intentions of following up on that if I have the opportunity to speak with Watch her face. Watch her face when you say it. Watch. Just watch. That's she gonna be like, oh shit. <laughs> I that is the bad time. Yo, you you already know. You already know Gene's gonna hit you with the eye roll. Infamous yeah, eye roll. that's a that's a fact. Like you, you ain't walking away unscathed. Oh no, oh, oh no. Nobody <laughs> walks away unscathed from a Gene oh, Ray no. encounter. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I can live with it.